What is up guys? We are here for our PCL Season 1 Draft Recap. If you guys don't know what the PCL is, I would suggest you check out the last video on my channel, one right before this one, announcing the PCL, the Pokemon Champions League. We are 12 very competitive players going up against each other over 10 weeks. I'm hoping to make playoffs, and uh, this is the team that I drafted, so let's start things off right away. I decided to name all of my Pokemon after coaches from the GBA, seeing as that I'm just finishing up with power rankings in the Global Battle Association. So first pick, we, uh, we were actually uh, picking, I'll tell you which pick, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So uh, I decided to pick something up that I knew probably wouldn't last uh, to the second round, even though we're only 12 players. And what I wanted to do was kind of recreate uh, my March Madness draft as much as humanly possible. And the first Pokemon that I wanted uh, was Tapu Bulu. Uh, but I figured that there was something a little bit more important before it, and that Pokemon is Chimpact the Infernape. So, we have uh, Infernape here. It is one of our Z-eligible Mons. I, um, I, we have two on this team, and I decided to spend two million out of our uh, 100 million budget uh, to give Infernape the possibility of holding a Z-Crystal. Only offensive moves. And, um, yeah, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of really good coverage that Infernape gets, uh, to support the Z-Crystal. Things such as Gunk Shot for fairies, uh, like Clefable and Sylveon and stuff like that. Uh, we have, um, Solar Beam and Grass Knot for, uh, bulky ground types that can take the hit, or bulky rock types. Uh, we, I mean, rock types aren't taking me on because of the fighting stab, of course. Uh, Close Combat. This thing is often seen as a very big threat in League format, uh, not only because of its varied coverage, and its ability to set up, uh, as well as its access to priority in Mach Punch and Vacuum Wave, uh, but also because um, it's it, it it just gets so many different moves. Like uh, it threatens so many teams because it can run Earthquake, it can run uh, Grass Knot, it can run a Gung Shot. Like I mentioned before, it can run Stone Edge, it can run anything, and, and it's a really good support mon as well. Uh, is what I learned in March Madness. Um, had I gone up against Uzi, at some point there was a possibility that I would be up against Uzi Gunner. Uh, I was going to run a defensive Infernape for his uh, Mega Scizor, and you can do that very easily with this Mon, uh, because its defenses aren't the greatest, but when it checks something, it checks something very well. Uh, gets access to Reliable Recovery and Slack Off, uh, status in Will-O-Wisp, uh, priority in Fake Out as well. Uh, which is really cool for uh, for a lead matchup immediately. It gets Thunder Punch if you need to hit like Gyarados. Uh, set up with Swords Dance and Agility, both uh, really, really strong. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't get Agility, does it? No, it doesn't get Agility, my bad. Uh, so forget I said anything there. I was under the impression that it did, but uh, just a very solid Mon overall. And the real reason that it's uh, so feared, because you look at this attack stat, it's only 104, same thing with its special attack. It's not that scary. Uh, in general, but the fact that it gets such powerful moves like Flare Blitz uh, and Close Combat, these base 120 attacks that especially when powered up by a Z-Crystal are terrifying. Uh, base 104 attack doesn't matter anymore. As long as you're hitting for super effective or if you're hitting a Frail Mon, they will die. So uh, it's a really good Mon overall. I've, I've discovered that it's uh, it's a great choice Scarfer with momentum and U-turn. It does everything. Uh, I get Stealth Rocks, so it's my first Stealth Rock Setter. I wanted to get a lot of Stealth Rock Setters so that I didn't have to rely on one specifically every week. Uh, and Infernape is one of them, definitely, and it's one that forces switches quite a bit. So I'm um, happy to have this thing on my team. Chimpak, the Infernape. Moving on to the second Mon. Unfortunately, immediately after my Infernape pick, two picks later, Tapu Bulu got taken. So I had to rework my draft a little bit. Uh, but I knew that I would be able to get the majority of the things that I wanted. So... The next Pokemon I decided to get very solid Mon would not last till round three if it was still on the board. We picked up Cooper Kashiro, the Zapdos. Uh, Cooper loves this Mon, so um, that's not why I decided to get it, but it's a, it's a very solid defensive Mon. It's really good offensively as well because it's base 125 special attack. It can be run specs, it can be run scarf thanks to its base 100 speed. Uh, I love base 100 speed tiers. They're really workable with choice scarves and just uh, speed creeping defensive Mons. They're really good at that. Uh, between base 90 and base 100 is usually good. Leftovers is usually the item you're going to see on this. Berries are really good with it too. Normally it only needs to really run Charty Berry uh, for taking on things uh, like Excadrill, for example, uh, that gets Rock Slide. 
you just run a charty bear, you heat wave that thing and it's gone. Uh, the access to agility, this this actually has agility, I'm not lying this time, uh, is really cool. A baton pass, you can agility baton pass. Uh, a defogger, I needed hazard removal, uh, absolutely 100%, so I decided to, uh, to get Zapdos. Hazard removal is... Uh, kind of important. It's not something that I want to focus on too much, and you guys are going to see that my team is actually not that weak to hazards. So, uh, well, maybe spikes, but everything else it can deal with really, really well. Um, it get This thing gets access to screens, which is great uh, team support, which I'm actually going to cover later. It doesn't get whirlwind, but I recently found out it gets roar. Uh, that would have been really nice to, to know uh, earlier. Uh, access to thunder wave discharge uh, for status toxic, of course. U-turn and volt switch is really what... Um, what makes this thing really, really good, uh, what also makes the Thundies really good is that they're able to uh, not be blocked in terms of momentum when it comes to ground types. Uh, the access to U-turn just means that you can get out on pretty much any ground type that you want. Um, Tailwind support is something that I use very often with Zapdos uh, if I have the right team to support it. And this team definitely has a great, great uh, synergy with Tailwind. You guys are going to see when we get into our later picks. But uh, yeah, no, this this is uh, this is one of my favorite mons in league format by far. It has to be in my top 10. Uh, I used it so effectively, so well. It, it, it worked for me uh, very, very well in the GPC in Season 5. Uh, it got me to playoffs. I never dropped it. I couldn't. It was just way too good. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to have uh, Zapdos on the team. I actually ran Signal Beam uh, for one matchup in March Madness because uh, it had a decent matchup, so... Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's Zapdos for you. The next mod I decided to get was actually not uh, a mod that I had on my March Madness roster, but it was the one that ended my March Madness run, and that is El Scizor the Nihilego. Yes, uh, I'm getting to use this thing in League format, and it's actually really solid. Uh, Beast Boost is, is a really cool ability because it, uh, it boosts the stat whenever you get a kill. So that's really nice. But the fact that Nihilego has very evenly distributed special attack, special defense, and speed means that you can play with it a little bit. So that, let's say you do this, for example. Uh, might do this in a few matchups. You go to 176 here. Uh, and this is lower than its speed. Meaning all you have to do is slap a life orb or a uh, an extra belt on this thing like Lars did against me in March Madness. And all of a sudden this thing is still a big threat. And it's getting a speed boost every time it gets a kill. Uh, which is insane. That's that's something you see, um, well, not that you see with Sharpedo and Scallopede, but they have the ability speed boost, and you're essentially copying that. You just need kills to get those off, uh, but this thing is very, very threatening. Uh, the fact that it's a grounded poison type is really good because it, it absorbs toxic spikes, and uh, both of my hazard removal in terms of toxic spikes right now aren't affected by them, so that's really good. Uh, clear Smog is something to, uh, to look out for as it can get rid of... Um, uh, boosts on boosting mons such as uh, I don't know uh, Call mine Clefable for example if it gets too many call mines up I can just clear smog it everything's gone uh, Acid spray is something that I saw used recently, which is also a very good option uh, Gets access to grass knot thunderbolt uh, Psychic and psi shock, which is really nice. It stabs in power gem and um, and sludge wave or sludge bomb and uh, it gets toxic spikes itself, which is definitely something that I wanted. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I had a toxic spiker on my team. The one downfall to Nihilego is its quad weakness to ground. Uh, but I actually end up only drafting one other quad weakness on the team, so it's not too bad. Uh, the quad weakness to ground, which is kind of um, mitigated by having Zapdos on the team, that's always nice. Uh, they pair quite nicely, these two together. Uh, this thing doesn't like taking special... Uh, ice type hits while well, this thing can soak them up and threaten out ice types or things ge that generally have ice type coverage um, And Nihilego is just r really solid. You can run a choice scarf on it because if it's uh, 103 speed uh, it, it outpaces things like char uh, choice scarf Garchomp, choice scarfed um, Thundee T So those are really uh, that's a really good speed tier to have this 103 and uh, the base 127 special attack is really really threatening because you make this thing modest and all of a sudden you're looking at a, uh, a base 388 special attack that you do not want that boosted. If this thing is Choice Scarf, then it's Choice Scarf correctly. Uh, like, let's say I only need 301 speed on it for some reason. Or, uh, let's say, for example, I'm outspeeding Mega Alakazam. And I want to go to uh, 285. Uh, I believe this outspeeds Mega Alakazam. Um, this, this is a threat. <laughs> this is a huge threat. Choice Scarfed. Uh, 
the uh, plethora of items that you can run on this. It's it's really good with, of course, Black Sludge and um, and as well, uh, not not leftovers. What was I gonna say? Uh, it's good with Black Sludge and it's good with an Assault Vest. That's what I was gonna say uh, because of its high special defense. It can't take hits on the physical side, even from resists. It's really bad at that, even though it has a very good HP stat. Uh, it does not take physical hits very well. So uh, I want to avoid that at all costs. That's kind of what uh, Zapdos is here for. But um, on the special side, it can soak up hits. 109, 131 is ridiculous uh, if you fully invest into it. I won't show you guys all of the uh, the stats exactly, but you just know that this thing is really good. So this is going to be a long, uh, another long draft recap, isn't it? And I can already tell. Anyway, moving on to the next round. Uh, I could have saved this pick for a lot later, but uh, like I said, I was trying to replicate my March Madness draft as much as possible, and I absolutely wanted this one on my team because it is, it has been one of my favorite megas to use uh, thus far in draft league format. Uh, from having used it in March Madness, its ability is uh, just so so useful in so many matchups, and uh, its speed coupled with its special attack. It's a special wall breaker. It's insane. Uh, and that Pokemon is MV, the Mega Alakazam. I decided to name this thing MV. I'm not 100% sure why. I guess it's because he has an Alakazam in his, uh, on his team in uh, GBA. And nobody else has Mega Alakazam, I believe. So, uh, this, these, these stats, man. Uh, it actually gets a slight boost in its defense when it Mega Evolves. So, it can take certain hits on the physical side. Uh, last season, the GOT, we saw a Mega Alakazam live a minus 2 Mega Horn from a Scallopede. Uh, because of, I believe, 44 EVs in HP, uh, so that was quite interesting. But uh, the ability Trace uh, is so good, guys. Magic Guard makes it so that it doesn't take any hazard damage when it comes in the first time, and then you Mega Evolve, and the next time you come in, you have the ability Trace, uh, which m means that you take any ability uh, that your opponent has. There's so many things that are so good. You look at, like, Magirna's Soul Heart, uh, other um, Ultra Beasts, Beast Boosts, uh, you have, there's, there's too many things. Intimidate to make sure that you can live a hit from whatever you, you're switching in on. Um, and this thing's coverage is ridiculous. Uh, Psychic and Psyshock, of course, is stab, but then you look at everything else. Uh, Dazzling Gleam. Let's go over every special move because physical moves don't really matter that much. Uh, I've seen one physical al Alakazam in the past. I don't think I'm going to try that, but look at its special coverage. It gets, uh, Charge Beam, which I, which I used in March Madness. It gets, uh, Dazzling Gleam. Energy Ball, Focus Blast, it gets uh, Grass Notch, Shadow Ball, um, it, it's just a Signal Beam, like, pretty much you don't need anything else, <laughs> this this is really all you need, uh, Dazzling Gleam to hit, like, Ghost Dark types, uh, Energy Ball for things like Manaphy and uh, other really bulky waters, Focus Blast to break the Dark types that your, um, that your Psychic type stab can hit, uh, as well as Dazzling Gleam, those two pair very nicely. Your opponent typically expects Focus Blast. One of them's gonna miss, right? Just run Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it's a lot better. And uh, Shadow Ball to cover the bulky Steel and Psychic types like uh, Jirachi and uh, Metagross come to mind. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a fun Pokemon to have. I'm really glad I have it. It also gets really good other options like um, just substi using substitute in general is is not a bad thing. Knockoff is something that it gets, which is really nice. Um, it's knocking off items is always really good. Uh, foul play is something cool because if something gets up too many swords dances uh, and it can take a hit, usually you come in, you foul play, and you knock it out. Uh, it gets screens, it gets magic code, it gets taunt. Uh, fast taunt is so so useful. Thunder wave. Uh, I mentioned Substitute before, that's a very important thing uh, because Mega Alakazam forces a lot of switches. Getting up subs and making sure you're behind a sub on a switch in uh, and being able to 2-it KO it is just so good. Uh, there's some other options in here that are uh, that are also really good. I won't go too far into it, but this thing gets a lot of status moves that are really useful. So. Uh, glad to have it on the team. MV, the uh, Mega Alakazam. We'll see how much work it puts in this season. Moving on, we have um, my ground type in uh, March Madness was Nidoqueen. And the problem I found with Nidoqueen paired with the rest of my team, now keep in mind that it was an 8 Mon draft, was that it shared an ice weakness uh, with the rest of, of my Mons, things like Zapdos and Tapu Bulu, but I don't have Tapu Bulu this time. So I can afford to have a ground type that's weak to ice. I don't necessarily need to cover that, uh, have a dual typing that's not weak to ice. I'm going to stick with a regular ground type. Something that I was lacking in March Madness, though, was a good dark type. And dark types are really good at get, getting rid of the psychic types that um, that Infernape and Mega Alakazam don't like dealing with. 
and uh, the first thing that popped to mind, and uh, by the way guys, I didn't talk about the prices of these things, uh, I'll go over them really quickly. Uh, Infernape is 14 points, it is actually my most expensive Mon. Uh, then we have Zapdos at 13, Nihilego at 11, Mega Alakazam was also 13, uh, Crocodile is 10. And Crocodile is our second Z-Mon, I decided to pop a Z-Crystal on it, effectively making it um, into a 12 point Mon. Uh, but I've seen Z Crocodile in the GBA. Uh, it's really, really good. It gets access to uh, Aqua Tail, uh, Outrage, Superpower, uh, a lot of really good things. Uh, let me just go over it real here, real quick here. Shadow Claw, uh, Sludge Bomb, which is good for Tapu Bulu if I ever face it. Uh, I'm actually not going up against Razor. He's the one that has Tapu Bulu this season. It gets uh, Stone Edge. It's uh, my sec my third Stealth Rocker, actually. I didn't mention, but Nihiligo also gets Stealth Rocks. So this is my third Stealth Rocker. So I'm already up to three, and I'm only five picks in. So this is really nice. Um, the ability to have both Intimidate and Moxie uh, makes this thing really hard to prep for because uh, it's either going to come defensive for something, and if you can read that it will, then it's not so tough. But... If for some random reason uh, the, a crocodile decides to run Choice Scarf with uh, Moxie and it can get an EQ sweep on you, then it's pretty much over. And uh, Crocodile is a really good sweeper. Uh, above all my other mons, I think uh, maybe Nihilego surpasses it a little bit in terms of sweeping capabilities, but there's always a check to Nihilego. There's like a Bullet Punch or an Aqua Jet waiting in the back, but uh, Crocodile is not so weak. As you can see, it's stats, uh, 95 HP coupled with 80 defense and 70 special defense, especially with Intimidate, um, make it a very bulky mon. The 92 speed tier is really nice. It hits, uh, I believe, 311, yep, yeah, 311, uh, which is faster than things like um, Landorus T. It's faster than uh, Excadrill if it's not Scarfed. So it's, it's a really nice uh, speed tier. As a bulky mon, it does its job. It gets access to both knockoff and pursuit, uh, two dark moves that are uh, luxuries to have, honestly. Uh, I really only have uh, Alakazam with knockoff up until now, but now I have Crocodile, so it's really good. Um, yeah, I just I just really like this thing. Uh, it's I've used it once uh, in the GPC in Season 5. This is kind of a mix of my March Madness team and my GPC team at the moment uh, from Season 5. If I would have had Mega Gardevoir over Mega Alakazam, then it would have been like um, almost identical. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's really solid. I'm, uh, I'm happy to have it on the team. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a couple of other interesting options that I'm seeing here as I'm going through and I'm looking at the teams uh, that I'm going to be facing in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, this looks cool. All right, so uh, that's... Uh, ooh, Iron Tail. Um, yeah, so Crocodile. Uh, this thing's named Crimson Seabad after, of course, uh, Chase in the GBA who has Crocodile. He's drafted it twice, the two seasons that I've watched him play in. Uh, he's had Crocodile on his team, and he also had it as, as a Z-Mon this season. So um, yeah, that's, that's Crook for you. Moving on, uh, my... Uh, again, my March Madness team. This is what I was really focusing on. Up until now, I have Infernape, I have Zapdos, I have Mega Alakazam, and um, my next mon was something that I discovered in March Madness that I thought I would never like, that I absolutely hated the idea of drafting because I always thought it was so bad and so passive, but it's so, so good, guys. Uh, I recommend that any of you that are looking to draft uh, a bulky water type, try this mon out because Milotic Pokemon is uh, is the next member on the squad and I use this thing in March Madness and I, I'm not 100% sure because I wasn't counting, but this may have been my kill leader. <laughs> I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but uh, Milotic is really good, guys. Uh, access to, of course, Scald, Ice Beam. Gets Dragon Tail for phasing and Haze for being able to... This pretty much stops setup on its own between Dragon Tail and Haze. This thing's stats, 95 HP with access to Recover. 79 defense may not look like a lot, but paired with this HP is actually quite bulky and it's very hard to break without setup. And the fact that it gets Marvel Scale and can run Flame Orb or just absorb status in general make it really solid. I even ran comp competitive when, in one of my matchups 
uh, because my opponent's only way of removing hazards was defog, and I had a skarmory, uh, and I took advantage of that, and my Lodic pretty much beat uh, a set of four mons on its own. And yeah, so uh, my Lodic is really solid. Access to uh, Miracoat, Miracoat was something big uh, that a lot of my opponents had to be ready for, uh, and that were they were very fearful of attacking my Lodic uh, with special attacks throughout the entire tournament because of the fact that I had Miracoat uh, as an option. And uh, Toxic is always nice for wearing down things that your coverage can't do. Uh, it's just, oh, dude, this, this mon is so, so good. Uh, it even gets Psych up to beat, like, slower Calm Mind users. <laughs> oh my god. No, my Lodic is, is really solid, guys. Main thing is Recover. The biggest thing is Recover, the fact that you just don't die. <laughs> You're just not dying. And you can phase with, a, with Dragon Tail, or you can just sit there and be bulky and take attacks and Scald Burns. Scald Burns are priceless. Uh, in any draft league. Uh, just having a really bulky water with recovery and access to Scald is uh, is huge. So uh, that's uh, that's the first six. My Lodic uh, was worth 10 points. So at this moment, uh, I have um, I have six Pokemon. I can draft between 9 and 11 Pokemon. So um, either 9, 10, or 11. And at the moment, uh, with all the points that I've spent, I have 25 points left. To make do so I need at least three more mons and I only have 25 points left so I'm looking in the lower uh, range of things and uh, something catches my eye something that I really wanted but it got sniped from me and that mon was Serena and that would have completed my um, my firewater grass core uh, I don't believe in cores really but having Serena on the team would have been very valuable uh, for something that I won't mention just yet because I might be making a transaction very soon uh, but I'm not sure yet we'll see about that um, but there was something about Serena that I really really wanted uh, also the access to rapid spin u-turn for momentum the the pairing with um, uh, Zapdos's volt switch or u-turn and uh, infernape's u-turn was really really solid but since Serena got sniped from me, I skipped over to my next pick, and I knew that I wanted something that was absolutely bulky on both sides and would have a very hard time being broken, even if it didn't have reliable recovery. At this point, I had three Pokemon with reliable recovery. I had Zapdos, I had Milotic, and I had Infernape with Slack Off. It's not going to run Slack Off too often, but it's still there. And Mega Alakazam actually also gets recover. So I have four Mons, technically, with, uh, with reliable recovery. But I wanted something to just tank hits from typings that I couldn't take yet. And if you look at a common trend on my team, I have a very tough time with fairy types outside of Nihilego. And if it's a physical fairy, I'm kind of screwed because everything on my team kind of just drops. So I wanted to be able to cover things like Azumarill, uh, to cover uh, your stray Grand Bulls and things like that. Uh, even Tapu Bulu if I ended up facing it because at the moment Tapu Bulu kind of runs through me if it's a Stone Edge Woodhammer set. So I needed something to cover that and the mon I decided to get was Sceptile MC the Registeel and uh, I named this after George because I'm pretty sure I've seen him use it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if he has it right now. I can't even remember. Uh, he might have it on his roster. Uh, yeah, he definitely does because Lars prepped for the Registeel and the Registeel didn't come and that's why he had that clip uh, about uh, Jar in his week 11 video. But uh, Sceptile MC the Registeel. Uh, Registeel is my fourth stealth rocker. Uh, it is worth a... Uh, it's worth eight points. And... Clear body is really cool uh, because you can't get intimidated and things like curse. Uh, this thing can run curse rest really well. Uh, it gets access to, of course, iron head, seismic toss uh, for anything that is um, is below base 100 HP. You can seismic toss it, always break a sub, do substantial damage to those things. Uh, things with like 80 HP or lower that are uninvested uh, get three hit KO'd. Uh, you have access to things like uh, Earthquake for the likes of Magnezone. You can even run uh, Superpower if, you, if you're if you fearing Magnet Rise, for example. Um, access to Toxic, Stealth Rocks. Uh, but the real trait, uh, the, the best trait of this thing is its bulk. Look, look at these defenses. Base 150, base 150, uh, and 80 on HP. The 80 on HP is a little bit lackluster, but coupled with these defenses, it doesn't even matter. You might as well have... Uh, base 140 HP with base 100 defenses at that point. I think it's about equivalent to that um, It's just a really good mon for soaking up hits with leftovers. Uh, I can just take hits for days uh, Spread status around your opponent's team between Thunder Wave, Toxic, 
uh, and uh, run really cool setup sets on the defensive side, which is something that I rarely have. Uh, I don't have a lot of bulky Calm Mind users typically on my teams. I try to focus on things like Dragon Dance and um, Swords Dance, Agility, uh, but having Registeel is really good. Uh, Countermon. Counter is a really good, uh, a really good move. We mentioned Mirror Code on Milotic before. Counter is another thing that uh, does something similar. And uh, yeah, no, uh, Registeel is uh, is really cool. It's got some cool coverage on the special side as well. Its offenses are uh, are equal. If we check out its special coverage, you guys are going to see it gets Charge Beam, uh, Flash Cannon, Focus Blast. Uh, things that are quad weak to these things don't like, don't appreciate taking them. Like if you hit a uh, Gyarados with a Thunderbolt. It's 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 not gonna be happy with you. So uh, yeah, it's it's really good uh, in general. I really like Registeel, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to use it to its maximum potential this season. Uh, the lack of recovery is the one thing that kind of drags it down, but other than that, it's just really good. So uh, I just smacked something with my hand, and now it's hurting. But uh, Rock Polish is also a set, by the way. Uh, it's not just Curse, but yeah. So that's uh, that's my Registeel, uh, Septile MC. Moving on, speaking of Dragon Dancers, uh, again, going back to my March Madness draft, I wanted something, uh, I didn't have a physical wall breaker yet. You guys saw uh, I have Infernape, which is not considered a physical wall breaker, it's it's more just, uh, it's a very hard hitter, but it's not a wall breaker. Um, Zapdos, of course, is special, Nihilego special, Mega Alakazam special, Crocodile could be considered a physical wall breaker if it comes with a choice band, uh, Infernape can be, uh, can you can say the same thing about Infernape, but I wanted something with absolute raw power on the physical side and uh, a win con. A win condition is so, so important and uh, the first mon that pops to mind when I think win condition, this is largely because of Ethan, uh, is, is Haxorus. And uh, we've got A-Drive, the Haxorus, this season I'm naming it after Dan, uh, after his Haxorus which uh, he did pretty well with, I would say. Uh, he's, uh, he brought the right set most of the time, like Scarf and DD, that's usually what it runs. It can run Choice Band too. Uh, it's got a really nice speed tier of 97, which means that when it hits a Dragon Dance, uh, if you're max speed, you go above uh, a lot of other Scarfers uh, that are below uh, this speed tier, like the get to base uh, 95, you completely outspeed them. And uh, even with, a, with an Adamant Nature, uh, 293 is more than enough to outspeed, uh, like, again, the likes of Mega Alakazam and Mega Aerodactyl, uh, very easily. Uh, the ability Mold Breaker and Unnerve, both, um, but Mold Breaker specifically. This ability is so ridiculously good, guys, I can't even stress it enough. The first thing that pops to mind is Mimikyu. Uh, you come in on Mimikyu, you're faster than Mimikyu, because I think it hits base 96 speed, if I'm not mistaken because uh, it hits 320 uh, at max, and you come in, you iron tail it, you don't care about disguise. Uh, you come in on Ronin Wash, you earthquake it, it's dead. <laughs> it's just gone, uh, because it doesn't have levitate anymore because of Mold Breaker. Like, there's so many situations where Mold Breaker is so clutch, and uh, Dragon Dance is such a great move in League format. Um, it, it sets up so many win cons. You, th you see things like uh, Salamence and Dragonite that have so many... Uh, wins because of being able to uh, to straight sweep through teams uh, because of Dragon Dance and uh, the one thing that uh, they have in common uh, as well as Haxorus is their raw power and Haxorus actually has the highest base attack of, of all dragons uh, that are currently allowed I believe at base 147 which means it hits 432 with max, uh, max adamant really strong uh its bulk is not horrible actually base 76 hp is not the greatest but it's got base 90 defense so if you go max hp for whatever reason like let's say you don't need uh, all the attack investment in the world and plus one is more than enough to knock things out like this thing gets access to poison jab and uh and iron tail like i said of course it gets dragon claw earthquake um this is typically the set you'll see could be running low kick as well aqua tail it's it's coverage is pretty decent uh i kind of regret not putting a z crystal on this mod uh, to some extent, but at the same time I needed one extra little Pokemon at the end and you guys will see that But uh, this thing with the Z crystal can be really strong especially with outrage devastating Drake not having to lock yourself into uh, Into that outrage. Uh, it's just it's it's really strong night slash Dragon dance is such a huge win con so I'm really happy to have this thing dual chop is really cool for breaking uh Excuse me, breaking sashes, um, and yeah, it's uh, like things like Aerial Ace, man. Like I really regret not having a Z Crystal on this for things like Buzzwool and uh, Mega Heracross. Uh, not that anybody necessarily has Mega Heracross. I haven't even checked. 
be honest with you, but like just thinking of those things in general and having like aerial ace, uh, supersonic sky strike, like a Haxorus using supersonic sky strike. I'd love to see the animation for that. If anybody has uh, a link to a clip of that, I would love to see it. it also gets access to incinerate. Its special attack is pretty uh, abysmal with uh, base 60, but uh, incinerate can actually be. Uh, that's another thing. Like if if I had a Z crystal, uh, I would be able to use Inferno Overdrive with uh, with incinerate, which is interesting. But uh, I'm happy with having it just as a regular mod because I'm going to be slapping a lot of different items on it throughout the uh, the season uh, between Choice Scarf, Berries especially, things like Lumberry, Yachi Berry, uh, Roselli Berry, like all of those things are definitely going to come into play. Um, you can even run it slightly defensive with like Rocky Helmet. Uh, the one problem is that I do not have a Wish Passer on this team. Uh, and that was something that I did want, but I, did, I couldn't find room for, unfortunately. So uh, I had to live without it. But uh, I have my Registeel. I have my uh, Haxorus. I think it's time to get a fairy, guys. And um, it's sometimes I, I don't end up completing my cores. Like my, my uh, Firewater Grass core is actually not going to end up getting completed. Spoilers. But Fairy Dragon Steel is really, really good because it covers each other really nicely. And uh, I wasn't focusing so much on the typing combinations of the three. I was more so focused on what each mon can do, and Registeel is there to soak up hits, Haxorus is there to absolutely wall break, and I wanted a mon that could support my entire team really nicely. I've, I've drafted it once before, but I've only ever gotten to use it in one game because that season ended so abruptly. It was an off season that we decided to do, which was the worst idea ever, and uh, I had this mon, and I really liked the way it looked, and I, I like the way it looks even better now. Uh, because this mod is very, very hard to prep for, and that is Alolan Ninetales. And why is it so hard to prep for? I mean, it's it's got base 81 special attack. That's not so great. I want you guys to look at this speed for a second, because base 109 is actually really clutch. This outspeeds uh, not only things like Infernape, but things like Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion. That speed tier, that 108 Keldeo, uh, it outspeeds all of them. It goes right above them and hits 348, 347 if you want to get cheeky. But um, yeah, so this special attack is not the greatest. However, Alola Ninetales, while also setting up Snow Warning, which is able to chip away at a, my opponent's teams, I have a lot of reliable recovery on my team. I also have a Magic Guard Mon in uh, Alakazam, which has to Mega Evolve first turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, I have a lot of ways of mitigating the, uh, the hail damage. Uh, I don't have a hail abuser. But what Alolan Ninetales does really well is sets up Aurora Veil. Uh, and Aurora Veil is uh, a ridiculous move. This plus Light Clay essentially means you have uh, dual screens for 8 turns. And dual screens for 8 turns with things like Mega Alakazam, things like Infernape, um, Haxorus, all of these things that can set up and be huge threats once they're set up uh, is actually stupid. It's, it's unfair, and uh, I'm going to take as much advantage as possible with it. Uh, and Alola Ninetales is actually also a really good support mod with, because of things like Encore. Uh, it gets Nasty Plot for setup on its uh, on its special side. So it can run Blizzard, which is... Uh, it, it's uncommon to see Blizzard um, on, on mons in Draft League format because not a lot of things get hail. You'll typically see it on like an Obama Snow. Um, so it's, it's, it's very, very rare to see Blizzard. Alolan Ninetales is one of the only Pokemon that can run it effectively because it sets up Hail itself. So, that's really nice. Uh, gets access to Dark Pulse and Moonblast. This thing is a dragon killer, by the way, guys. This thing murders dragons. Uh, there's not a single dragon in the game that can switch into its dual stab, except for Dialga. <laughs> Dialga is literally the only one that takes both neutrally. Um, everything else, uh, maybe Zardex. Zardex as well, sorry. Um, everything else takes uh, super effective damage one way or another. Uh, this thing gets Roar uh, for phasing. Uh, we already mentioned Nasty Plot. It gets uh, Ice Shard, actually. Uh, that's something that a lot of people don't know, but Alolan Ninetales does get Ice Shard, guys. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys real quick uh, because it is in here. Ice Shard, there you go. So its physical attack is crap. It's 67. But if a Salamence comes in after rocks and hails up, it can't set up on me. <laughs> because I can just Ice Shard it. So, um... I'm, or if it's scarfed, like if I know it's scarfed, I can just ice shard it, it'll die to hail on the following turn. So I, I can EV myself specifically to make sure that that happens. 
So, uh, Alola Ninetales, very good mon. And the biggest thing that I wanted from Alola Ninetales, this was such an important thing for me, was having access to this move. This is why Alola Ninetales is so hard to prep for. Because Freeze Dry doesn't care if you're a water type. And it's very hard for teams to wall Infernape plus Alolan Ninetales without a water type. It's extremely difficult to find mons that wall both of those together. Because Infernape, while already having access to things like Grass Knot and Thunder Punch to be able to use Z moves to hit them for super effective damage, if it's a Seismitoad or a Swampert in the way and I happen to not be running Grass coverage, Freeze Dry just comes in and pff, gone. <laughs> like it doesn't it, they, they don't Alola Ninetales doesn't care it does not care about your water types it is going to kill every single one of them it's going to kill every Rotom Wash it's going to kill every Kingdra uh it, it's going to kill everything oh yeah by the way uh no Kingdra can't switch into Moonblast so um I was I was going to take back my statement from before about Zard X but uh yeah no uh Freeze Dry hits uh so many things for super effective damage because ice is such a good offensive typing already it has it's it's super effective against so many things you look at ground you look at grass um and and uh, you add in the fact that it's super effective against water as well at the same time is stupid freeze dry is a very uh you don't see it on a lot of mons so it's a, it's a very good thing to have mammoth swine is one of the best mons that runs it and now all the nine tails like a lot of people haven't discovered this mon yet and haven't used it uh, efficiently and I really think that I can take it and make it something great so I'm hoping to do that this season with uh, Lola Ninetales which costed me seven points Haxorus was also seven points at this point I only had three points left and the only thing I wanted uh, on my team because I was looking very fighting weak outside of Zapdos fighting types just ran through me like powerful high jump kicks so I wanted to make sure to have an immunity I wanted a ghost and uh, I had never used this mon before in Link format. I don't know how it's going to go, and it's the mon that I'm considering making a transaction with because I haven't uh, found a reason to bring it yet. And that is Old Man Tup the Dust Noir. By the way, uh, Lola Ninetales is Gym Leader Geo, and we already covered uh, Haxorus, but Dust Noir, Old Man Tup, uh, the Ghost, uh, who was not seen this season as he uh, he's not gotten a single win in 11 weeks. Um, but this thing is really cool. Um, it's got access to Will-O-Wisp, which was something that I was kind of lacking on the team outside of Infernape. And I don't want to always run Will-O-Wisp on Infernape. That's not uh, optimal. Uh, but having access to uh, to dual... Uh, like, Will-O-Wisp and Toxic hit everything, essentially, outside of uh, Heatran. And um, it's it's got access to Priority and Shadow Sneak, Sucker Punch. Uh, it gets Frisk, uh, which is a really, really good ability. Uh, I've discovered that this uh, ability is uh, super good in the GPC this season. Uh, having Amon just come out, lead matchup, finding out what your opponent's item is. So, so, so good. Uh, and it gives you so much information for further on into the match. And Dust Noir's, um, its HP is really bad. It's 45. Uh, but coupled with these defenses, again, 135 and 135, it can be bulky on either side, and it gets access to Pain Split as a form of recovery, which is really solid, especially if you status things. And um, it's got access to, uh, to cool punch moves, if I recall correctly. Uh, gets Ice Punch, uh, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, uh, Sucker Punch, Shadow Punch, Power Up Punch, uh, and uh, Focus Punch, <laughs> so, uh, and Dynamic Punch. All of these punch moves, because uh, it actually has fists. And, uh, yeah, it gets Destiny Bond, which is really cool. It's, it's kind of slow to be able to use Destiny Bond, but, uh, yeah. Um, probably not going to be doing that. It gets Memento, which is something definitely to look out for, especially with all of my setup on my team. I'm definitely going to be, uh, looking at that, uh, from here till the end of the season, see if there's any matchup where I can use it. Uh, Taunt's not going to be useful because this thing is abysmally slow. Uh, Trick is something. Trick is cool because you can run, uh, Choice Band and just trick it away. Uh, that was something that I didn't really have on my team yet. Like, I think the only mon that had Trick was, um, was Alakazam, and that can't run Trick because of its Megastone. So, uh, having Trick, being able to, to trick things, useless items, is really cool. It's another Curse mon, uh, and it, if you run fully specially defensive with Curse, it's almost impossible to break. And, uh, yeah, again, uh, more options that I'm seeing all of a sudden, uh, on a couple of my mons that I'm really, uh, okay, I think I might end up keeping this. Now that I think about it, um, because there's uh, there's something that I want to do at some point to somebody. Uh, let me just see if I can do it to my next opponent. 
that, 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 that. Eh, no, probably not. No, I wouldn't do it to him. Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's Dust Noir. That's Old Man Top. That's the entire team, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, I know this is 40 minutes long. I like to go in depth on each one and really explain why I got them and everything. You guys already know that about me, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the whole team. You guys uh, can see it. Uh, Infernape, Zapdos, Nihilego, Mega Alakazam, Crocodile, Milotic, Registeel, Haxorus, uh, Lola Ninetales, and Dust Noir. Uh, I'll just repeat with all their nicknames. We have Chimpact, uh, Cooper Kashiro, uh, El Scizor, MV, Crimson Sea Bad, Pokemon, uh, Sceptile MC, A Drive, Gym Leader Geo, and Old Man Tup. So big shout outs to the GBA for all the nicknames. And uh, hopefully we can carry this team into the playoffs, guys. I really want to do that. And uh, our first match is going to be going up later today. Uh, so definitely be sure to, to catch that. It is against a Blake. Moxie Infernape, so get ready for that. He's a big opponent. He's in the NPL Majors. Uh, he's known to be uh, kind of an on and off player uh, to some extent, but uh, w when he has good days, he's like impossible to beat, and he's like the king of innovation as well. So um, I'm looking forward to what he's going to come up with uh, for our matchup. It's going to be interesting, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the the whole team, guys. That's the Montreal Habsols for the first season of the PCL. I'm really happy because I was able to mimic my. Uh, my March Madness draft really closely and add key pieces that I didn't have before because it was an 8-mon draft. Uh, things like Crocodile with Intimidate, uh, Registeel for a really uh, solid steel type. I had Skarmory, but Skarmory was also weak to Electric. That's another thing about, um, about Registeel, by the way, guys. Uh, another primary reason that I wanted it was I wanted it to take uh, Ice type attacks and Electric attacks. Like, it's really good at taking both. Uh, it doesn't care because of this, this huge special def uh, defense that it's really solid. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the team, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you did, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be linking every coach in the PCL as well in the description. So make sure to check them out. And be sure not to miss our battle later today. I'm not sure what time it's going up. So keep an eye on your sub boxes if you have time. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.